Let's dive into how to use a container workflow in AWS. First, what we're gonna do is use our Cloud9 environment here as the core development place, and then we'll build our container and push it to ECR, which stands for Elastic Container Registry. So this is a private cloud-based container registry. All major cloud providers have them. In this case, it's called ECR. Next, I'll spin up a second Cloud9 instance, although this could be maybe a virtual machine or some other location on AWS, and then I'll pull that container and I'll run the exact code without needing to install anything. So really, this is the power of a container is you build it in a development environment, push it to the container registry, and then pull it into another environment. So let's go ahead and do that. So first up, what I'm gonna do here is go to AWS and build a new container registry. So I'll go to ECR, and say fully managed Docker container registry, and then create a repository. So let's go ahead and call this um, container scratch. There we go. And uh, I'll go through here and say create repo. Great, so container scratch, that looks like it works. Now to push something, I would need to look at the push commands. And you'll see these are all the push commands and I'll come back to those in a second. So next up, what I can do is go back to my container that has a project that has a Docker file here, that has this location, and then it has the application source code, which is right here, a very simple application. And that's all I need to actually push this to the ECR region. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step-by-step -step go through those commands. So I'm going to first uh, copy this, and this will allow me to log in. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Great, so now I've logged in. Next up, I'll build this container and I'll go ahead and copy this. So we'll build this container. Great, so it uses the local Docker daemon and then pushes uh, that tag to that location. Great, and then um, let's go ahead and finalize the tag. So we'll go through here and do this, perfect. And then next up, what I'll do is actually um, push the command exactly to the container. So this push command here pushes it to that remote container location. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So now this is going to push this locally built image into the Amazon container registry. Now, while this is going, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Cloud9 and I'm going to spin up a new one. Right, so I'll go here and uh, say create new environment and we'll call this um, pull container uh, and this will be a brand new fresh environment. I don't need to do anything. I can just go through here and say next step, create environment and then this thing will spin up. So while this is spinning up, let's go back to the other project here and you can see it takes a little bit of time to push it but one of the advantages of pushing it inside of a cloud environment like this is that it's got uh, very fast bandwidth between the Cloud9 environment and the container registry, which really will save you a lot of time when you're doing container development. And it, it's a, a huge advantage versus, let's say you're on a laptop somewhere in you know, um, another country or somewhere with bad bandwidth. Uh, this is a great way to solve that problem because the network traffic is actually going between the Cloud9 instance and the registry, not between your local slow network connection and the remote location in AWS. So that's a, a huge win there. So it looks like it's almost done here. We'll just wait, this, wait for this for a second. And once this is done, I'll be able to log into the second instance and then pull down that container image. Great, looks like it's pushed, so let's go ahead and um, go here and refresh this uh, section. So just the, the first thing that we'll, we'll check out here is that there's nothing on this local machine. In fact, you can see that it's just a brand new environment. And what I'll need to do is log into ECR to be able to pull the container. So one trick you can do is you can actually just type in the history command, and this will actually show you the last time you ran a command and I can take the login command here. So this logs me in, right? And, and now uh, all I need to do uh, after I've logged in here, give it a second, great, is to pull that container locally. So uh, what I can do is say uh, docker pull, 
and then I'll need to change it to this uh, command here. So we'll say pull this and let's go ahead and try this out. And so what this does is it downloads that container that I pushed earlier to this local machine. And then once it's set up, all I need to do is look at the readme file for how I ran it before. And we can look at uh, a command here. So it looks something like this. and We'll just tweak it a little bit. So let's go ahead and go back here. And I'll maybe even put this into the readme so it'll be ready for us. So I'm going to change this though if I scroll back to this command, which will be this right here. So instead of it pulling from a remote location, it's going to pull from the private container registry, right? So this will take just a second. There we go. So we've downloaded this container now to run it. Again, I'll just put this command together right here and we'll go ahead and do this. There we go. And we're able to actually run this locally and I can do it more than one time. I can say Jim. Right, so the, the key learning here is that uh, if we go back to this architectural diagram is that you can develop in one location, push those changes and another developer on your team can easily grab those changes and reproduce exactly what you did or you can push it uh, potentially to a production environment right here, right? So uh, it's a great workflow for development and it's a new cloud native way to develop applications.